Good morning, folks. It is November the 30th. The last two vlogs have been a deep dive into how postmodernism frames itself as a religious substructure. It's a parasite on a religious substructure, actually, because it's not a fully developed ideology. In the first vlog, I implied that, uh, I didn't imply, I stated that such systems were doomed to fail because they attempt to deny the nature of man and to build a system that reaches unto heaven, literally the Nietzschean version of the Ubermensch. And of course, like the Tower of Babel, that system is bound to collapse, too big to fail, too big to succeed. I have spoken metaphorically throughout this, by the way. And in the first vlog in this series, a chap, a postmodernist, got involved in a conversation with me. So in the last vlog, I deconstructed that fellow's conversation. I examined his deconstruction, rather, which is a better way to put it. So, I have been speaking metaphorically for the last two vlogs. And now I'm going to speak as a Christian, both metaphorically and spiritually. And I make no apologies for doing so. Okay. So those of you who are atheists, you are welcome to your thoughts. I am not trying to make any converts here. I would make a poor head-slapping Baptocostal soapbox televangelist. I'll let truth speak for itself and God reveal whatever truth you uh, resonates with you to you. So, generally, this is a discussion about false gods, what we serve is what we worship, and how, under postmodernism, the state becomes the ultimate authority, and the ultimate, the herd becomes the ultimate good. And this has a religious quality to it, and this new religion has three trinities and they are identity politics victimhood and equality of outcome this is the unholy trinity of the new woke cult and these are direct products of postmodern cultural marxism this is the type of socialism practice in states which are in a state of transition from being democratic socialist to full-blown communists. There's a reason that these three things form the unholy trinity. Because they remove the possibility of individuals from being self-actualized. Identity politics divides mankind on the basis of intersectional identity. And instead of treating all equally and being the law being blind to a person's identity, the blinders have been ripped off and people are assigned their identity not based on who they are as an individual, but on the basis of all the groups to which they belong as though that is the most interesting thing about them. Which is why when you meet them, you don't actually meet them as a person. You meet the groups whom they represent when they choose to adopt this philosophy. Then comes victimhood, this cult of victimhood, where to be pathetic is considered to be noble. And particular intersectional groups are assigned a higher rank of victimhood that only the state can rectify. 
And then there's the Ola Skell Maid, as they say in Norway, all shall be with equality of outcome. I just watched a video this past week of a Finn who is serving in politics in Norway. At any rate, she was examining a classroom there and they had a child with Down syndrome in the class and there were two people sitting at that child's desk helping that kid do his assignments or whatever. And the rest of the class had to sit with this child in the room. And of course, because of the child's disability, which is no fault of the child, it's not that the child doesn't deserve care and treatment, but because of this child's disability, the entire class was being distracted and couldn't do their lessons properly. At any rate, the Finn, who was a socialist herself, pointed out this injustice and she had to resign her career in politics. She was pillared and vilified so bad. I'll post a link to this video below and I want you all to watch it because it's quite remarkable what happened and why. This insistence that everyone is the same except for when it comes to their intersectional identity or their economic status is utterly remarkable. And yet, in these socialist societies that are in transition from being democratic socialist, whatever that means, because I've never understood it, never understood it well, because it doesn't appear to be democracy to me. Nevertheless, these societies, which are in transition toward a complete communist society, still they value, still they value athletic prowess. So in the field of athletics, and perhaps in the field of music too, these are areas where people can develop their individual capacity and shine. However, essentially, they're not winning for themselves, they're winning on behalf of the state. But personal achievement is valued in these se sectors. And of course, the competitions are only as valid in as much as all the other athletes with whom they are competing have trained equally as hard and are equally as competent. So that when a competition is won, the truly the most exceptional have won that competition. This is lauded as a universal benefit to society. It's fascinating to note though, that the denial of individual achievement in every other aspect of society is not applied to athletics or music. But in a completely communist society, which has gone fully through this transition, the rejection of personal sovereignty does not result in the individual not needing to achieve. Because Competition in a full-fledged communist society is brutal. I've traveled all over China. We have a Russian neighbor that lives just up the street. They begin their studies at a very young age. And they are encouraged at the sake of all else to pursue personal development and growth. But in the end, when they do achieve, it serves the needs of the state, not the individual. In the West, only in the West, because of the Christian message that all are called, but few chosen and that all are accountable.
and that none can hide, and that there is no collective guilt, only your sin before God. These are the things that framed liberalism, the Age of Enlightenment, and the Great Awakening. These are the underpinning substructures behind the narrative that made, well, it's even, it even has a phrase, the Protestant work ethic. Pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, achieving all that you can achieve, becoming all that you can be, being self-reliant, self-determined, self-actualized, and responsible and accountable for your own behavior. These are the things that our government here in Canada are sacrificing on this altar of worship of the state. And they're bringing about this perverse religion, this woke religion through identity politics, the cult of victimhood, and equality of outcome. I know you're listening to this, Jeanette Spearman. You were a pedagogue. And I know this is one of the things that galls you the most about the school system today. My mother and my aunt were school teachers as well. And they would find all of this completely appalling. Children need to be encouraged to achieve. And school should be a place where our minds are awakened and opened and challenged. You see, with Dr. Peterson's new book coming out, that the publishing house that it is being released through, when his last book was a number one bestseller, the publishing house, they had to provide safe spaces for the, the woke children working in the publishing house because they couldn't handle what Peterson was saying. this wagging of the finger when they themselves are the most immoral, perverse, unnatural, and unself-actualized humans that have ever lived is just pathetic. All of us are accountable to counter this irrational argument that is now being foisted on society as the new normal. Normal refers to a distribution and that things that exist out in Six Sigma, near Six Sigma out on the wings, aren't normal. That's why they call it a normal distribution. The things that happen in the middle are the normal. You've got mean, median, and mode. What our government has done is to deconstruct statistics. They even have bureaucrats in government that are foisting this idiocy on the nation by creating false statistics, which is why these polling companies can't even predict an election and why we have a media that wholly serves the needs of the state. We are in a very, very dangerous time in Canadian history when all of us are accountable to bring this ship of state back on track. I am running this vlog as philosophy for Philistines and politics for plebeians. This is the common man's Coles Notes 101 version of common sense politics and common sense philosophy. Please start thinking, conversing about this, talking to your children about it, talking to your neighbors, family, and friends about it. Because all of us are accountable. That's what being in a limited constitutional democracy is all about. We need to hold our MPs' feet to the fire and tell them we're not going to tolerate this nonsense anymore. And we're not going to have our schools used as indoctrination centers. Schools are there to enlighten children, 
to teach them how to think, not what to think. We need to be able to accept contrary views and learn how to debate difficult arguments and, and have these difficult discussions. I don't think there's a day that goes by when I turn that boob tube on, when I'm not appalled by what I see. Please think. Share this vlog. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring that bell and post it everywhere you can. Thank you so much, folks. You have a great day.